Hey guys, Andrew McFarlane here from StarterJuicebar.com here with another segment of Juice News. Today we are talking about how Texas lawmakers have passed a bill banning the terms beef, chicken, and other meat terms on plant-based labels. This is a pretty big deal and I'm going to talk more about what the implications and probably what I think is going to happen in the industry as a result of this. So uh, before I dive in, if you guys are new to the channel, you don't know who I am and what we do, over the last 10 years, myself and our company has had the pleasure of supporting hundreds of entrepreneurs around the world, launch and scale successful juice concepts, smoothie concepts, and more, as well as running our own businesses in this sector. All the information on this channel is coming from that wealth of experience. And in this juice news segment, we're talking about all the things that are coming up in the industry, things to watch out for, things that I feel like are going to impact all of us who are in this industry that we should be aware of. And this is one of them. So as you guys know, in the plant-based movement, you could say, I don't want to call them fake meats, but sometimes imitation meats, things that are plant-based, they can either be made from soy or tempeh or maybe mushrooms and other ingredients, beans, and people have been attempting to recreate flavors and products that people who were traditionally meat eaters were familiar with. I know for myself, I've been on a plant-based diet for over 16 years now. And when I first got started, I was eating a lot of seitan, right, which is um, a soy-based product. Uh, I was eating a lot of tofu. I was eating a lot of, you know, other things that weren't really as natural in the, in, in the way that I eat now. But then it was a good transition food for me because it was uh, mimicking flavors I was familiar with. It was mimicking textures I was familiar with. And now in Texas, they've passed a bill. Right. We all know that there's a company called Beyond Meat. Is that term going to be uh, controversial now? Are they going to be able to sell their products? Are they going to have to rebrand their products for the Texas market? So I'm going to read a little bit. This is from naturalproductsglobal.com. And the title, as I mentioned, reads that Texas lawmakers pass a bill banning beef, chicken and other meat terms on plant based labels. Now, we all know that the meat industry has a lot of lobbying power, and if they feel like these plant-based companies are coming and taking market share from them, then guess what? They might have had some, uh, and I don't want to say because I don't know this for a fact, but they may have had some influence in them banning this in Texas. Now, this is only, to my knowledge at this moment, a statewide bill that's been passed, but it says when I read on in this article that legislators in Texas have passed a bill to ban terms as such as meat and beef on the labels of plant-based food products, a law supported by big meat funded groups to stem the rising popularity of alternative proteins. The bill will also apply to cell-based meat products and insect protein. Texas lawmakers have approved the House bill. So as you guys know, there are all kinds of other, you know, when they say cell-based meat, if you don't know what they're talking about, to my knowledge, there are people who are now in labs from things like stem cells able to recreate meat-like products that are not technically plant-based to my knowledge, but they're grown. It's like lab-grown meat. So do some research on that if that's something that you're interested in, if you don't know what I'm referring to here. But the implications of this are very interesting because I, I, I once, I remember I had an experience with my sister's uh, now fiance who went to the grocery store. He saw something called Beyond Meat. He's a meat eater. He wasn't planning on eating a plant-based meal at that time. He got home and he was like, oh man, I thought I was getting something that was like Beyond Meat. Like it was supposed to be amazing and it was like more meaty flavored or whatever it was. He actually thought it was meat. He tried it and it was like, wow, this is actually really good. I'm glad that I made this you know, mistake. And so in that way, maybe he got converted because he wasn't totally aware of what he was buying. And now I don't know, um, you know if that's a good or bad thing, but what I can say is if you're someone who's an advocate of the plant-based movement, then that would be, you know, one more person who at least maybe they might not be a full convert, but sometimes is going to maybe see an alternative. So I think the plant-based industry, and I wonder how this is going to translate to people who have juice bars, because it might not just be these companies in grocery stores. It could be in your establishment. Are you going to be able to allow to use the word burger? Are you going to be able to allow, use the word chicken? I wonder if they're going to allow, because right now, a lot of times what people will do is they'll change the spelling. So they might say instead of, you know, C-H-I-C-K-E-N, they might remove the C and just say, you know, or I've seen people say like trickin' chicken or something, right? They change the wording of it so people know it's plant-based. And they also sometimes don't even want to associate and have people who are plant-based 
think that they're actually serving real meat. So this is an interesting dialogue. Um, and it's also going to have interesting implications for the way you label things in your business if you're in Texas. And who knows, like I said, a lot of times with certain states, certain trends will pick up and it might start in Texas. And who knows, it might become a, a nationwide thing. Eventually, we'll see. So be aware of this. One, if you're in Texas, you're going to want to be aware of this with labeling your products and do more research. Obviously, this isn't legal advice, but this is something that I came across. And this is in this article that I'm reading is from May 18th, 2021. So this just came out depending on when you're watching this video, but it's always good for us to be aware of these things as they evolve and what the implications in the industry are for our businesses and just to see where the trends are going overall, because we do know that the vegan movement, the plant-based movement and the alternative meat uh, substitution movement is only growing. It's only going to continue to get bigger. There's no stopping it at this point. And I do believe that other um, big, you know, probably dairy and meat lobbyists they want to save their market share. And so sometimes these things are a bit of a battle. So I hope you've enjoyed this content. This is what I've had for you today in this segment of Juice News. I'm curious of what your thoughts are on this subject matter. Do you think it's actually a good thing? Put in the comment box below that they should be actually uh, not allowing people to use these kinds of terms if they are not meat-based products. Put your comments and thoughts in the comment box below. If you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Any uh, Buddy who's new, if you haven't liked the video yet, I encourage you to like the video. Follow us on Instagram, at Starter Juice Bar. Exclusive giveaways and other content that's only being released there, so you definitely want to check us out on Instagram. And lastly, we have a podcast on iTunes and on Spotify, the Juice Bar Experts Podcast. Easy to find. Reach out to me personally at Andrew at StarterJuiceBar.com if you need support developing your business from wherever you are to wherever you want to go, whether you've got multiple stores and you're looking to grow or you're just getting started and you have no idea what you're doing, we can help you. Until next time, see you soon. Hope you guys have been enjoying the video content. If you are inspired to launch your juice business but you're not exactly sure what steps to take, for you, we've created a free ebook, 15 Steps to Starting a Juice Business from Scratch. This is gonna give you a high-level overview of everything you need to do from where you are now all the way to opening your business. Now, if you want to go even deeper, we've created an online course, the Juice Bar Master Blueprint. This is going to go into great detail into every aspect of starting your business, everything from branding to menu development to finding the right location, the equipment that you need, and so much more all the way to launching your business. There's links for both of these in the description below. I know you're going to find a lot of value out of them. As always, hope you guys are happy and healthy, wishing you a lot of success, and I'll see you at the next video.